establishing Thanks a new for culture tuning in to for the Sports Bear Podcast. League. If you like this video, hit the like and subscribe button and don't forget to turn on the notification. In this episode, I want to talk to you about possibly late second round picks or second round picks that will help your team. In most of this draft, you're picking late in the second round or maybe early in the second round, mid second round. You're likely not, your team is likely picking a player that they're going to either stash or probably not going to make the team or probably just picking a guy that's going to end up filling out the summer league roster. Now this year, due to the summer league probably being cut short due to a short off season, and the NBA starting before December 22nd, you can bet the teams are gonna be a lot more judicious about picking in the second round. There's a couple of guys in the second round that I think that could be some, some good contributors, some score off the bench kind of guys, some, some good defenders who develop, develop into a 3 and D kind of player. And there are some guys that who, who actually possess a little bit of a superstar potential, even though most people aren't seeing it. The first guy I wanna talk about is Mark Hart. No, I don't think Marcus Howard is going to be a superstar. He's a classic, undersized, big time scorer. I mean, this guy's led the, the NCAA in scoring. They've been a top three scorer in the last two seasons. To put it into context, he's a senior, but at his age, he's only 21. If you're looking at prospects with similar age, you're looking at Emmanuel Quickly, Ashton Hagen. If Marcus Howard was 6'3 instead of 5'11, you can almost guarantee this guy would be considered a lottery pick. Not only that, he's, he's a great shooter. A team like the Warriors, you know, could get him in the second round, have him come off the bench, play a Quinn Cook, Quinn Cook type role. Um, you see Quinn Cook doesn't fit on every team, but you know, when he was on the Warriors, he would come in, hit a couple of big threes. Um, on the Lakers, he didn't really fit into the defensive scheme, so they really couldn't play him. But uh, Marcus Howard, you know, if he goes to the right team, don't be surprised if he's one of your guys that ends up like a Devontae Graham, able to score off the bench in waves. Uh, while I never think he'll be an all-star, he might not be in the league for 10, 13 years, he will have like a solid, you know, two to three years where he's a big-time scorer. Um, and if he doesn't, you know, last in the NBA, you can guarantee he'll be a big-time scorer overseas. A lot of these guys who don't stick in the league, end up being a big-time scorer overseas. Uh, unfortunately for him, the NBA is fixated on height. Um, fortunately for him, he's a, he's a great shooter, which could, you know, help him out, but with the defensive liabilities of being 5'11", his chances to make it in the NBA are probably not as good as they would be maybe like 10, 20 years ago. Another guy I want to talk about in the second round is Cassius Stanley. Uh, Cassius Stanley is one of the prospects that I haven't seen get a lot of love, but his athleticism, his shooting, his his playing ability is definitely on par with <laughs> what they're looking for in the NBA. While I don't ever see him being a superstar player at, at the worst, this guy is definitely uh, a Gerald Henderson who had, what, about eight to ten year career in the NBA. Uh, Cassius Stanley checks almost all the boxes. I guess the only thing he probably doesn't check is just his lateral quickness. His, his, his off-the-dribble game isn't amazing, but he's still... He still has a pretty good game. I wouldn't say he's like on R.J. Barrett level, but he has more NBA-ready skills than R.J. Barrett had. I definitely think by next year he'll be a more efficient player in the NBA. He's definitely suited more for a number two or three option. Um, but at the same time, he also has potential to be a much better player. Scouts are pretty low on him because I think he's about 21 years old. Putting that into context, Marcus Howard, who... I just talked about has played in the NCAA for four years. He's 21, while Cassius Stanley has only played one season in, in college, and he's already 21. But with his athleticism, his ability to shoot, um, there's no telling what the ceiling is if he goes to the right team. Another guy that I want to talk about in the second round that I think that can be a really good player is Nick Richards. Nick Richards is a 6'11 guy, um, pretty good shot blocker, um, has a low post game. I don't think he'll be, you know, a superstar, but I definitely could see him being one of those um, serviceable centers that you can rotate. Um, if JaVale McGee can be a starting center in the NBA, I don't see why Nick Richards can't. Sticking to the centers theme, um, the next guy I want to talk about is um, 
Kansas center, Ozabuki. He um, had a really good season. I think he was um, on the second team All-American. He was definitely a great defensive player. Um, this guy has tremendous athleticism. At the NBA Combine, he had the highest vertical ever for a center. Um, all of these things are very encouraging because if you're a center with not without an advanced off the game, ability to shoot threes, um, being able to dribble, then the next best thing is to be an elite rim runner. Um, if this guy was a, a freshman instead of a senior, we'd be talking about this guy in the first round. Um, we've seen big men like him before, like DeAndre Jordan, go in the second round and end up really good big man in the NBA. Um, I wouldn't put put it past with a guy with that athleticism to be able to stick in the NBA if he can expand his defense to be able to guard perimeter players. We're talking about a guy who can be a steal in the second round. Actually, this draft might be one of those drafts where you might want your team to have a second round pick even more than the first round. And I'm not saying like you don't want a lottery pick, but if you're in the late second round and maybe you can trade back and get two second round picks, this might be you know, the year to do that. Another guy coming out of Duke is Trey Jones. And from, unfortunately for Trey Jones, even though he had a pretty good season, he's going to fall because this year has a lot of talented point guards. Even though these point guards didn't produce like everyone expected, there's a lot of guys with potential um, point guards going in the first round. Just to name a few of the first round point guards that are coming out, um, you got Lamella Ball, you got Tyler Terry, you got Tyrese Halliburton, you got RJ Hampton, you got um, Cole Anthony. All those guys coming out this year is, is going to push a guy like Trey Jones back, but Trey Jones is, is a lot um, more experienced and ready to contribute now than maybe a guy like Cole Anthony, even though three or four years from now, Cole Anthony is going to be a better player. This, These are um, great guys to fill out your roster. If you're uh, already a championship team or you're a playoff team, adding guys like this, help deepen your rotation, help push you in practice. You love seeing guys like this come out. Another guy that I'm really um, looking forward to seeing in the league and I think can do something is Reggie Perry. Reggie Perry had a, had a really good season in uh, Mississippi State. Uh, he definitely improved big time from his freshman season to this year. Guys like that, you, you love to see a guy who improves from his freshman to his sophomore season. It's a big deal to that just shows that he has work ethic. And um, when you're picking the NBA, sometimes it's not just talent. It's the ability to get better. And he's definitely shown that. So definitely if your team is picking in the second round, you should get excited for this draft because a lot of times when they say it's a weak draft, that means that there's some high-end role players coming in the second round. And there's some guys in the second round that might end up being you know, better than some of the first round pick. You might not get your next Steph Curry or um, Zion Williamson or LeBron James, but you can definitely get possibly your next Draymond Green or guys like that who potentially can be Hall of Famers, but they're just not going to lead your team in scoring and they're not going to be your high pay, highest paid player. But that doesn't mean that you should look at the draft like it's it's not going to work out for your team. Great teams win in any draft because they have great scouting departments.